What's going on y'all? Welcome back to another video. So today I wanted to give you guys a list of gift ideas for fishermen. And I think every angler would be stoked to unwrap some of these. So I'm going to be breaking this up into three different categories. First one is going to be $50 and under. The second one is going to be $100 and under. The last one is going to be a little bit more expensive if you want to spend a little bit more money on your angler and want to give them something really special that I think they'll really appreciate. All right, so starting off with the $50 and under category, most of these are honestly way less than $50. Starting off with the first item, I got a good pair of fishing pliers. These are always really nice to have, even if your angler already has a pair of pliers. It's always nice to have multiple of these. You never know when you're gonna need them. If you lose them or forget them, it's always nice to have a backup pair. For me personally, I'm a big fan of these Cast King cutthroat pliers. These are really awesome pliers and there's a lot of great features on these. As you can see on the nose right here, there's a little hook and these are for splitting split rings. So if you don't know what split rings are, they're basically just like keychain rings, but really small and it's what connects hooks to lures. Trying to switch those out with just your fingers is a nightmare. So I really like having one of these pairs of split ring pliers when I'm on the water. And I even find that little hook on the nose to be really helpful with pulling hooks out of fish, especially if they get their hooks really far down in the throat. Having that little hook has saved me a few times and saved fish a few times. Another awesome thing about these pliers are these little holes right here. And so it makes it really safe for when you're tightening your knots after you tie on a new lure, you can tighten it down and not have to hold it and run the risk of your hand slipping and getting a hook in your hand. There's also some line cutters right here at the top. Another cool thing about these pliers is that there's some little slots right here on the top of them. Those are for tuning your hard bait. So if you have a crankbait, if it's not swimming straight, you can actually use that to tune the lure and make it swim straight again. So really nice having all that into one pair of pliers. You can just put them in there. It has a little belt clip on it right there. So you can clip that onto your belt and it comes with this little clip on the end. So you can clip it to your belt loop, your backpack, whatever it might be. So if they do come out of the sheath, they won't fall off into the water. They have these which are seven and a half inches, but they also have ones that are eight and a half inches that I didn't realize they had until after I bought these. I would honestly go with the longer eight and a half inch one instead of the seven and a half inch, just in case you have a fish that's hooked really deep in the back of the throat. A little bit extra length is always nice to have. So next thing on the list is a pair of good line cutters. Now the pliers that I just talked about do come with line cutters, but for whatever reason, I always just end up going for these whenever I have to cut some line. I don't know what it is. I think it's just easier to use. These also come with a little retractable lanyard. So you can pull this out and clip this to your belt loop or somewhere in your boat. I personally have a few of these. So like I said, if your angler has a few pliers and if your angler has some of these, it's always nice to have a few of these. I keep one in my garage where I keep all my tackle for when I'm rigging up to go out fishing. I keep one on the boat. It's always nice to have multiple of these. They're not too expensive. So I'm sure your angler would appreciate it if you wanted to buy even a few of these. They even have different kinds where this little piece is a little bit longer, a little bit more like scissors. I would honestly go with those just because it's always nice to have a little bit more length to cut maybe a skirt on a jig or something. You never know when you might need some type of scissors or just a straight up pair of fishing scissors, which I'll also link down in the description below. I just really like these because they have the retractable string on it. So you can just clip it to your belt loop. Another good thing to have on the list is a good pair of fishing lip grips because you never really know when you might catch something toothy, you know, all around the country, you might run into something with teeth while you're out fishing. Another great thing with these is that you can actually use it to keep your fish alive. So if you do catch a bass and you want to get your scale out and you don't want to just leave it out of the water, or if you're on a boat that doesn't have a live well or like a kayak or something, you can clip these onto your fish, put it back in the water, tie this off to your boat, step on it, tie it around your ankle or something. I don't suggest doing that if you're around alligators, obviously. Use that string to keep that fish in the water while you get your scale out, you get your phone ready to take a picture. It's just always nice to have a pair of these fish grips on hand for whenever you might need them. All right, so next thing on the list is a fishing scale. This is is what you use to weigh the fish that you catch. And again, this is something that I like to have a couple of with me whenever I'm out fishing. You never really know when you're gonna catch the biggest fish of your life, you know, the fish of a lifetime. Even if you already have a scale or if your angler already has a scale, you never really know when these batteries are gonna die or if it just decides to stop working, you know, something happened to it, it gets damaged. I personally keep two or three in my boat at all times whenever I'm out fishing. And even if I'm bank fishing, I like to have at least two on me. And I personally really
really like the ones with the lip clips on them. So much better than just a hook. You know, the other ones just have like a metal hook that you put through the fish's gill or you punch a hole through its lip or something. I think these fish grips are just better for the fish and much easier to use. So definitely get one with one of these fish grips on it. And this one's a little bit more inexpensive, but if you wanted to buy your angler a really nice one, I personally don't have it yet, but I would like to get it and I would be stoked if I did get one of these. It's the Rapala touchscreen scale. So it actually has a touchscreen on it. You can save the weights of the last five fish that you catch. And it's really great if you have a tournament angler, someone who does a lot of fishing tournaments and stuff, it can be a really great tool for them to have if they don't already have it. So the cheaper one definitely gets the job done. It does what it's supposed to do. It weighs the fish, but the more expensive one is just really nice and would be really sick to have. I know I would love it if I got it as a gift. And so this next thing on the list is a gift that keeps on giving. So this right here is a lure retriever. This thing is a big, heavy piece of lead. You just put your line through this loop. You hold your line tight and it'll pop it free. But if it doesn't pop out on the first one, lift it up and just keep knocking it, keep knocking it. I've spent five, six minutes just sitting there going up and down, up and down. And then finally it just comes out. It could take some time, but it saves so much money. So I'm talking like hundreds and hundreds of dollars of lures have been saved because of this thing right here. It's really more for people that are on the water, like actually on boats or kayaks. It's not really meant for the bank because you kind of need to get right over top of where you're snagged. And obviously if you're fishing from the bank, you can't really do that. But if your angler does have a boat or a kayak, even if they don't, you know, you never know when they might be taken out on a boat or a kayak. And a tip with these things, they normally come with some string. They have like maybe like 30 or 40 foot of just like rope kind of tied to them. What I like to do is actually take an old rod like this and I cut it down as you can see right here on the first guide. I'll just cut that off and this will just fit well in my boat. It doesn't take up as much space. And I put the heaviest braid that I can find anywhere from like 80 pound or over, I really suggest. So the next thing on the list would be good if you have an angler that's a little bit more unorganized. If it's possibly your spouse or someone that you live with that's an angler that you want to get them something to stay a little bit more organized. You know, they always have rods laying around everywhere. So what these little things are, are rod holders. You can screw these into the wall and clip your rods in it. And it's just a really great way to organize your rods. If you have a bunch up in a corner and just, you know, they're in the way, they're kind of annoying. These are a great way to just kind of line them up and have them nice and organized on the wall. I have a whole DIY video of how I put these up and built them into a really sweet looking rod holder. It's really nice because you can customize these and fit any type of rod that you want on the wall. And it just ends up looking really good. I like these a lot more than the other types of fishing wall racks that you can get on Amazon, but I'll leave a link to some of the other ones just in case you wanted to check those out as well. All right. So last thing on the $50 and under list would be one of these really nice sun shirts. This keeps me super cool and protected from the sun for when I'm fishing in the summertime in the heat is long sleeve. They have a nice big hood on it and you can throw that up. It can protect your neck. They also have ones without hoods. If you think your angler would rather not have a hood, but I personally love it. I love just throwing the hood up. I think it's better than those neck face shields that you get. I think it just feels a little bit better. You don't have to have that up all day. I have a few of those that I do use sometimes and I'll leave a link to some of those down in the description below. I personally really like the AFCO shirts. I think the material that they use for them is just way better. It's way nicer. It feels cooler than some of the other brands that I've tried. It saves you from getting really badly sunburned, especially on the neck, on the arms, on the forearms and stuff. All right, so moving up to the $100 and under category, but we're sticking with clothes. This is another AFCO product, but this is the AFCO Reaper hoodie. This thing is sweet. It comes with a little neck gaiter inside the hood. And so you can put this on and it's built in. It's a nice fleece material. It keeps me super warm in the winter time. When I'm fishing with other sweatshirts on and I put the hood up, a lot of times it's just really small and I feel kind of restricted. This one is nice and big. It doesn't really block my vision too much and it fits really well with the hat. It comes out a little bit and it is perfect for wearing with a hat on. It has these adjustable strings on the hood, tighten those down and I don't have to take my hat off when I'm about to drive the boat. And it's really nice to have that and the face mask to throw that up if you're going really fast down the lake. Really nice hoodie. They have these in all different types of colors. So if you have an angler that also does a lot of hunting, they have camo ones as well. So the next item I suggest is a fishing backpack. Back when I first started fishing and I was fishing mostly from the bank, they didn't really have many options as far as fishing backpacks go. I just kind of threw all my tackle and stuff into a normal book bag. And I always wish that they had something that was just more suited for fishermen. Fast forward nowadays, they have all different types of options out there, all different sizes. And there's going to be two that I'm going to link down in the description below. The first one is a little bit more inexpensive. It's actually under $50. So it could have gone in that first category. One is just kind of like a over the shoulder strap. There's just one strap on it. I've used those types of bags while fishing 
fishing. And it's really nice to have that one strap because you can kind of turn the bag around, mess with whatever you need to get out of the bag right there in front of you while you're standing and you don't have to put the bag down. But they also have a normal double strapped one as well if you want to do that. And so the other option is just a little bit more expensive. It's a little bit bigger. It's about a 40 liter bag. So it's pretty big. It can fit a lot of tackle. It has a whole front opening compartment where you can keep a bunch of tackle boxes and then also a compartment up top where you can keep other types of tackle, other soft plastics, maybe a rain jacket, maybe the hoodie. That'd be a good bag if someone likes to bring a lot of tackle with them. Or if your angler does a lot of co-angling in tournaments where they go out and they fish in someone else's boat in a tournament, having a bag like that is really nice. And I dug around quite a bit on Amazon and picked out some of my favorite ones. So now I want to talk about rods and reels. So if you have an angler that's a little bit more experienced and have been fishing for a while, they might have a preference as to what rod and reel companies that they like to use. And they might rather pick those out for themselves. And so it might be better to get an angler like that, maybe a gift card. But if you have an angler that's just starting out, it's just getting into fishing, and they don't really have that many rods and reels. If they maybe don't even have a rod and reel, I would suggest something from Dobbins Rods. They make some really high quality, really great rods. And the Dobbins Fury is a good high quality, but still pretty budget line of rods. I have a few of them and I love them. I'll leave links to spinning rods and casting rods down in the description below. If your angler is just starting out, I suggest going with a spinning rod setup. But if your angler has been getting into it and they want a casting rod to get a seven foot medium heavy fast action casting rod, or if you want to go with a spinning rod, go with a seven foot medium fast action spinning rod. And some good reels to pair up with those rods, the Shimano SLX casting reel. I suggest a seven to one gear ratio reel. And then for a spinning reel, I really like the Daiwa Fuego. Those two rods are great. It's always good to have a medium heavy. I have a bunch of different medium heavy rods that I use for different applications all the time. And then also a good spinning rod is always something every angler should have. The spinning rod will work good in salt water as well. Altogether, both those rod setups should be around $200. I think both of those setups will be really great for your angler to learn with. And then once they get experience, I'm sure they'll still enjoy using those, even if they get some better, higher quality gear. Those setups are still really good. They're really nice. And I still enjoy fishing them, even compared to some of my more high quality stuff. All right. So the last gift that I want to suggest to y'all, if you want to get your angler something a little bit more special and you want to spend a little bit more money on them, something that I absolutely love having while I'm out fishing is some type of video camera. Being able to go back and watch and relive some of those awesome memories that we make on the water is something that's so cool. Even if your angler isn't trying to be like a YouTuber or doesn't really post much on social media, if they are, then this would be a great option. But even if they aren't, it's just so cool to have a camera on the water with you to be able to capture all those fun moments, especially if you're going out with friends and family. Not only is it really fun to be able to go back and watch some of your footage, but it also can be really helpful. I can't tell you how many times I've remembered a catch going completely differently than how it actually turned out on the footage. It can actually be helpful to be able to go back, break it down, see exactly what you did, see exactly the angle of your cast, see how you moved your rod, how fast you're reeling. And I really believe that it's helped me become a better angler over the years of filming while I've been out fishing. Now there's two cameras that I would suggest getting for filming fishing. The first one is the tried and true GoPro. This is what I and the majority of other fishing content creators use to film ourselves. But another great option, this is something that is kind of new to me and just kind of new to the whole camera game now that they're getting a little bit more advanced is a 360 camera. So this is a camera with two 180 degree lenses on either side and it creates a 360 video. So you can stick this thing right in the middle of the boat and it'll be able to capture everything that's going on in the boat. And you see with the GoPro, it only has the one lens and wherever you're pointing this thing, anything that's happening behind it, you're gonna miss. So if you have this thing in the middle of the boat and you're sticking it up towards the front, say your friend's in the back, which I've, it's happened to me before, something exciting happens in the back of the boat, you're just not gonna capture it. And you know, if you put the camera all the way in the back of the boat so you can see the front and the back of the boat, then whatever's going on in the front is just a little too far away and you can't really hear or see exactly what's going on. And so I just really love being able to sit this camera right in the middle of the boat. It's a good distance and you can see clearly what's going on in the front and the same for the back. Both of these cameras you can download apps for and you can edit and save all that footage straight to your phone so you don't need any type of fancy computer or fancy editing software. And so both of the cameras are about the same price. It kind of just depends on what type of angler you have. For me personally, I really like using the 360 camera on the boat. Um, if I'm fishing with a lot of people, especially if I have more than one or two people on the boat with me, if you have a kayak angler, the 360 is definitely the way to go. It's really stable footage. You know, if you're using a GoPro, they have really good stabilization in it, but nothing compares to the stabilization that you can get with 
the 360 camera is these come with selfie sticks and what's really cool is that they actually disappear and so you can be holding the selfie stick up and it'll look like the camera's just floating in front of you it's really cool and they even have an extra long one that's like nine feet long i'll leave links to them down in the description below but if you have an angler that's more of a bank fisherman i think i would suggest the gopro a little bit more it still captures a very wide angle shot so you can still see a lot if you have a bank angler they're most likely going to be wearing the gopro on their chest or on their head i personally like wearing it on my chest or wearing it on my head a little bit better with the gopro because it's lighter a little bit smaller but i have seen people use these as a chest mount or a head mount and it does create a really cool shot as well i suggest getting the gopro for that though and if you have an angler that already has a gopro or already has a 360 camera then get one or the other because it's always nice to have two different options and i do suggest getting extra batteries for these obviously if you're spending all day out in the water and having these recording the whole time you're going to go through batteries pretty quickly so i personally like this little thing it's a little multiple battery charger you can just plug it in right here and charge three batteries at a time and i'll just plug that thing into one of these little power banks right here and so i'll normally plug those in and just have them charging while i'm fishing and then every time my camera dies just replace the battery you can get extra batteries for the 360 camera as well but normally i just plug this straight into the camera because i'm normally just setting this thing up on the boat open this thing up plug it straight into the camera and just have that plugged into one of these power banks and have that running all day i have done that with the gopro and i've had this in my pocket and had the cord running up around it but i just got kind of annoyed with the cord it kept getting in the way and it's just easier to replace the batteries and also the right memory cards i've had a lot of problems running these things all day and trying to get the right memory cards i'll always pop up with some type of sd card error i'll get home and i'll be missing half the footage that I get. The ones that I've had the most problems with are the SanDisk ones. I've just had a lot of trouble with them and they always have given me problems for the longest time. So the ones I suggest are the Lexar ones. I haven't had any problems with them in the last like year or so of using Lexar. The highest amount of gigabytes that you can get in your card is the best, especially if you're going to be running these all day. And so I'll leave links to all the camera stuff, all the products that I've talked about in this video down in the description below. I hope this video was helpful finding your angler, some good gifts. I'm sure they'll be stoked on any of these gifts that you want to give them. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you all in the next video. Peace.